This podcast is sponsored by valleygivesback.org. Love your local nonprofits and build a better community with a gift that costs you nothing today. Name a Valley nonprofit in your estate plan and create a legacy that tells future generations what mattered to you. With a planned gift, you have the power to impact the Valley forever without affecting your current lifestyle. Your action will inspire others to make a difference in their own way. Remember the Valley. Ask your accountant, financial planner, or attorney about planned giving options. Plan now. Give later. Impact tomorrow. Learn more at valleygivesback.org. For hundreds of years we brought you the news. For the info we gave you the clue. We're always sky high Change in market now threatens our lives Post-literation, critical reading Dumb down nation, signs have been breeding TV sucking ideas from our head Public discourse, just about dead We'll ride the dinosaur Yeah, ride the dinosaur And you guys ready to go? Yes. Yes. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie Podcast. I'm Eugene Driscoll, a reporter with ValleyIndy.org. Today, my guest is Derby Mayor Rich Zekin. Welcome back to the podcast, Mayor Zekin. Eugene, great being here again. Thanks for opening up your office to me. This is uh, much nicer than much nicer than my usual. Uh, Absolutely. Anytime. I told you. Open door for you. Anytime you want to come in. Then joining the mayor is his chief of staff, Mr. Andrew Backlick. Welcome back, Mr. Backlick. Thank you. Thank you for having us. One of the key ideas behind ValleyIndy.org when we launched in 2009 was to promote civic engagement. To that end, I used Facebook to gather questions from Derby residents, hopefully, to ask uh, Mayor Zekin. So I'm just a conduit here. So if you don't like any of these uh, questions, you can't get mad at me, all right? Let's agree upon that. No problem. But uh, in seriousness, uh, thank you to everybody who submitted questions. I was a little worried at first. We did the same thing with uh, First Selectman Kurt Miller of Seymour last week. He generated, or Seymour readers generated about a dozen questions. Derby outdid him. 20 questions we have. Well, we have a lot going on around here, Eugene, so I'm glad people are paying attention and hopefully I can get the answers out there. Exactly, too. exactly. So thank you to everyone. I, I kind of grouped some of these. I'm not going to go through all 20 because some of them had the same theme, so I'll run through them. But uh, I grouped similar themes together. A bunch of people had various questions about the Route 34 slash Main Street widening project, which is right behind uh, the mayor's shoulder as we sit here in his office, and progress in the Derby downtown redevelopment zone. Daniel Kresel, or Krizel? I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing Kresel, that correctly. Yes, Kresel. He said, what is happening to downtown Derby? Any progress? Tim Feely asked, uh, ask why they never rebuilt like they were supposed to on Main Street after they tore the building with the pool hall down. That was a great, uh, that was the last, I, I caught like the last two weeks of that Derby place. Billiards, I, I was spent a lot of time is in that, there. They had ping pong when I first moved up. Video there. games. It was awesome. Yeah, it was a great, oh God, it was a great little. It. So, and then Elizabeth uh, Bum. Bamolowski, I apologize if I'm butchering your last name. What's going to happen for Route 34 Derby Main Street? No development there yet. And finally, Gabe Casillo said, Timing and status of the downtown project's Route 34 development. We heard so much around election time and now relatively little. So let's tackle the Route 34 Main Street widening project first. Do you have a status? Yes, on absolutely. It and the projected start date. Okay, so what happened um, once the holidays and everything ended? Um, DOT, we had a meeting up in Newington. So we had all the players up there. Main part of this is the utility um, test holes that they had to do. So they were waiting on UI, Frontier, uh, to basically find out where the utilities are underground. And basically a lot of uh, like water company and, and some of the electrical is dated back to the late 1800s, early 1900s. So they not necessarily have all these plans and uh, diagrams of where everything is. So they physically have to dig a hole, look down there and find out where it is. So we had our meeting and there's another section over by where the Home Depot part is. That section's all contaminated. So we are working to take control of that property to make a right turn lane. 
But in order to do that, the EAP, EPA, I mean, has to relinquish that with along with the DEEP. Oh, wow. Because it's polluted, and we would have to take it over, and there's a membrane in there to keep any of the contaminants from going, you know, airborne and whatnot. So we are working with them. We just had our meeting two weeks ago up there. Uh, so that is in, in the uh, hopper to get things working, uh, to getting that transferred over. Um, once our designs are done from the utility companies, it comes to our engineers, who in turn we're going to finish up the final draft of everything. Then it has to go to the DOT. DOT has about five or six different departments that have to review everything, get their final approval. So now, when we were hoping it was going to be this spring, is pushed to the summer. Now it's pushed to August, September. And is to, that mainly because of the contamination? Because that's nope. the first I've heard to that. Okay, so no. what, what are So they? it's basically the utilities in okay. the ground. So they, they, they need these test pits to find out where it Figuring is. Figuring out where everything is right. is taking longer than expected. Absolutely. And okay. it, they, they, they weren't, it, had, it should have been done, I, I believe, should have been done five, six, seven years ago, but plans changed, things um, got pushed off. We are basically on a, 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 a set schedule of what we, we think everything should happen here for Derby. And so they're going forward with it. But now that we have um, concrete um, plans, now the utilities can do all their due diligence and get everything under there. So, and when, I'm sorry, just repeat yourself because I'm, I'm an idiot. But So it went from spring and now for, for like a, a, a shovel in the ground. Summer for, to put it out to bid. Okay. So now they're looking at August, September – to put this whole project out to, out bid, to bid, which is okay. going to be a three-year project, widening the lanes. And one of the holdups was right in front of Home Depot. We finally tackled that, so we're working on that now. So in conjunction with that, the downtown development, um, planning and zoning heard last month a, um, a plan to build mixed-use uh, residential and commercial. It was a public hearing. And that's the Lepore Brothers. Lepore Brothers, okay, yes, gotcha, gotcha. Derby Downtown. And now the second phase of that, because there were some questions from our engineer and from the zoning, so that's coming up again this month. Hopefully that's going to be all settled and they, they, we can get a vote on that, where they can start moving forward to getting that development started. And, and that it will is run, a, you know, excuse me, yeah, yeah, but it will run conjunction with the Route 34 project. And the private development you're talking about on the south side of Main Street, you're talking about- The old uh, Housatonic Lumber Berettas. Sorry and that's about, about that. no, 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 that's yep. I, I, just so people know, I yes. appreciate that. And we're talking about 200 housing units with retail or commercial on the yes. first floors, if I remember yep, correctly. Mixed use. If you, I mean, if you go down to New Haven, West Haven, and you see the developments that they're doing, it's basically, there's like a, a a plan of certain type of buildings that are going up. So it's going to basically the same thing. Um, if you go down by uh, frontage and um, uh, Boston Post Road, there's a development going on, U University of New Haven. And so it's basically like the same designs that they're looking at. So, so it's concrete uh, progress in for that property because it's yes. in front of the planning board. They they started their public hearings because they have to tweak some zoning things. Yep. So it is it, through the process. Yes. And, and hopefully they'll get a – not hopefully they'll get approved, but you know what I mean. I can't be. They'll well, get approved. Obviously, it's better than what's there there's now. A lot, of, a lot of positive energy. And then they'll the, get going. The board is there. The board's behind this, but you know it has to be done properly. You know, make sure everything is uh, all the what they say I's are dotted, T's yeah. are crossed. And, and the, yeah, the P and Z is not a rubber stamp exactly. uh, agency by exactly. any means. From what I but it's, it's it's realistic, and they've been working on this for two years since I've been in office, um, and. Um, you know, it's going to become a reality. And, and I know I was here. I grew up here, Eugene. And I remember when the buildings came down, the Derby Billiards and everything. And, it, and I'm, 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 we're right there. We're right on the cuff to really start seeing some development here. That A lot of these older people were like, we'll never see it. We're going to see it. And that was to my point. That's what I was trying to say badly is that there's so much cynicism. But this is in front of a planning and zoning there's paperwork, documentation. It's going through the process. No, absolutely. This isn't a pipe dream. And in conjunction with this, I'm going I'm to push it over to the railroad station now because uh, with the Waterbury line, we've had meetings. Let me tell you, we have not stopped having meetings with the state. Now, the Waterbury line just came up. We were up in Naugatuck. They got the bypasses all set. They're working on signaling, and they're working on a positive control on these trains in order to get – rail service going north and south at the same time so this way when you have a train coming south the northbound can go off and that's going to help our economic development down here because we're working it and we're, we're gearing this towards millennials who want to stay in these apartments an hour or two hour commute to new york city isn't a problem for that they, they can get a lot of work done on the trains 
And that's what we're working with the state to try to get that all taken care of and just get this whole Naugatuck Valley uh, corridor, you know, up and running. And we've been out there and we're telling the state, listen, stop forgetting about us. The shoreline, Metro North, the Hartford line, yeah, okay. Don't forget about the Waterbury line. And, and the COG that we, the Council of Governments, we have 19 towns up there. In the meeting we had in Naugatuck, we had 14 of those town CEOs there talking about getting this rail line. So it, this is all going to work together, the rail line, downtown d uh, development, and the widening of 34. Anything else you wanted to add to that, Andrew, before we move on? No, he, I think the mayor covered it very well. I'm looking forward to the uh, public hearing later this month at Planning and Zoning. I think Derby Downtown has been working really hard with us, in conjunction with us, to kind of get through the land use process, which can be cumbersome, everybody knows. Um, and I, I think to the mayor's point about being here forever, People are cynical. People have heard this for such a long time, which is why, and I've said this on your podcast before, we don't publicize the downtown development because it's contingent on so many different outside factors. The state, the utility companies, everything. All I can tell you is that the city and our city staff, or WPCA and other departments of the city that have, respons have been responsible for providing information to the state or to anybody else that has anything for the to do project. for the widening that's project. Right, yeah. We have been good actors in that, and we've done everything we can to kind of make sure that's uh, as as seamless as possible. Um, but again, there's a lot of different uh, entities that are involved in in that part. And in terms of the private development, we're looking at that as the first domino that falls, and then we can really thoughtfully consider what we want to see adjacent to their development in between the Derby Shelton Bridge and Factory Street. And that's step two, basically. All right, moving on. Uh, economic development, specifically, uh, Nick D'Antona asked about the fuel cell uh, project that's coming along on Roosevelt Drive uh, next to IDA across from the Dew Drop Inn, former Derby Rubber Factory. Bad Sons. But, yeah, right, right across. Right, right in there. Okay. We, What's the latest on that? We had a meeting Thursday with uh, Green Energy. And they fuel are, cell energy. Fuel cell. Fuel cell. Green fuel cell energy. Uh, they're approved with the uh, state of Connecticut. They are looking at March to May time frame to start getting uh, construction started over there. So we're going to take a piece of property that was garnishing $1,500 a year taxes to a fuel cell, which is going to be producing electricity going right into our grid. And we're going to be collecting $200,000 a year on that property for the next 20 years for a $4 million in, um, uh, windfall, basically, for the city of Derby. So that's going to help us with our uh, tax rate. And then Nick also asked, uh, I thought these were both good questions, about the concrete plant. Is there any discussion with the owner of the former Beard Concrete Plant property in terms of redevelopment? The site's been vacant for almost 10 years. Uh, probably longer than that. Uh, so anything going, and that's that property that is on like the behind Valley Transit or next to Valley Transit? Yes, right next to there. I'll, I'll have Drew was so your beard, this one. beard concrete, beard construction that was over there previously. Uh, it's privately owned by a quarry company, I believe, out of New York at this moment. That's an I-1 zone, industrial zone. Um, but Nick, uh, I actually saw this question online. I looked at a couple of them, and that was one that I that I kind of looked to make sure I, I was able to, to give him a good answer. Um 100%. I agree with his his contention that that would be a great spot for transit-oriented development based on its proximity to the train station. And to the mayor's point earlier, if we get the Waterbury branch line with increased service, that would be an ideal spot, I think, for uh, some sort of in, uh, development from a residential perspective. With it being industrial at this point, uh, part of what we've been doing through the land use process and through planning and zoning over the last two years is we recognize there were some kind of deficiencies in, in our zoning here and updating to allow for something like that, basically an overlay or a floating zone, if you will, to be able to take an old industrial property like that and turn it into a more viable mixed use or residential property. So I think that was a great, uh, great idea and a great thought. And I think, again, we're looking at this Derby downtown development as kind of the first domino that falls. Has the quarry owner or the, the quarry company that owns, have they been in contact with the city? We have had no contact kind of with, with Beard Concrete, other than I think there was some some vandalism over there last year, some spray paint, things like that. I think we, we contacted them about that. But short of that, in terms of development plans, uh, there has not been any uh, thoughtful and then, conversation. And then also that. the property that's directly across the tracks from that Beard it was recently sold. And, um, Is that the former BJ's? The former uh, BJ I'm, Road. Yeah, sorry. Commerce, yeah, yes. Commerce, Commerce Drive, okay. Right, so that's, uh, that's sold. We had uh, plans submitted on what they want to start building over there. So that's going to be utilized, and we are going to start And that's some 
quick pick talking about using that property for industrial storage yes. last I heard, right? Or yes, something like that. If they're looking at a building right now to go there. I don't know exactly what it's going to be in there, but uh, they're looking to start developing on that road. Okay. Uh, moving on. These were a bunch of questions from Chris LaRoque. Uh, Riverwalk Safety. He posted dog slash security on the Riverwalk. Uh, I guess tackling the second part first, there was a horrific crime, uh, sort of an aberration, I think, on the Riverwalk a few months back. A person was arrested uh, for a sexual assault. Uh, I know the register had a story about, uh, I think a petition was going around. Yes. Uh, So what's the status of uh, any security upgrades? It was a crime spree. It started on the railroad, uh, Metro North. Uh, An individual got off the train into Ansonia, did a couple of burglaries out there. Somehow ended up on the river walk and that incident took place. Um, you know, I've been in contact with the, with the chief. We've, um, with patrols, with, uh, we're looking at ways to enhance the security around there. Um, it's, it's, we're, it's in the, uh, it's in a process right now to, to, to design what we can do to make it more safe over there. Uh, like I said, I don't want to tip our hand on what exactly is going on there. Um, but things are moving forward and we've been, you know, like I said, working with the police department to make it as safe because in that river walk is the number one used w- river, uh, pathway in the state of Connecticut, mm. which is, you know, it's a gem for the city of Derby. We want to keep it like that. And this is part of with the downtown development. When people are looking at building down here, they don't have to build that. It's already in their back yard or where they're going to build their, uh, development. And so people can walk out of their apartments right onto the river walk, use it for fishing, walking, and uh, rec- passive recreation. So it, it's our gem. We want to keep it as safe as possible for our residents. And it doesn't sound like, uh, unless I'm missing stories, which is totally possible because there's not like a weekly uh, uh, compilation of crimes that, that are published that, that I'm aware of, but the river walk hasn't been a hotbed of, it's not like you have, people getting mugged there all the time no. there's nothing happening and the from- chief looked at the statistics for the past 10 years okay. and it's relatively you know very minor maybe thefts um vandalism but there's really been a safe safe haven down there for us so this was like very traumatic of what happened down here i mean it was it's unfortunate completely unfortunate and we're we're, we're we're doing all we can to make sure it doesn't happen again and i would think like i mean cameras i, I was researching right before i came down here based on this question New York City started putting in cameras in 2006. Uh, they actually, you know, they, they as a deterrent, they, they're, they're practically billboards. This is, they do it in Central Park and Times Square just to almost make people feel uh, safer. But it was, they spent something like $100 million for Correct. that first batch of cameras. So cameras, all, although a deterrent, could be expensive. But. Correct. I mean, I mean, we, we have a, a resource, which is the river, and we're, we've been searching other avenues to possibly get, like, a harbor grant and stuff like that. And I was like, I was like, harbor grant? I go, but we have the river right here. So there are grants that, oh, that's it. you know, it's, it's different. That's, that's why, what Derby has to do. You got to do a little roundabout ways. We do, to, and it's just like that's how my whole administration, we look at things and we look at different ways that we can get the uh, to the, accomplish that uh the mission that we want to do so i mean we're looking into this constantly so and we got people constantly co- like the fuel cell they came in one day we started talking about it next thing you know boom it's going to be here so we, we're not sitting here thinking something you know if you can come up with an idea and we're not going to like push you off we're like all right let's look into this and here we are well i mean we're getting things done here how about uh in terms of dogs i someone else asked it's a long question but basically she feels uh, this is sandra uh Leiden, that uh i guess dogs aren't allowed on the river walk she's seeing dogs in public places where they're not supposed to be i mean is there anything correct um on the green do- i noticed that i'm a too. dog lover i have a dog i have a yorkie um and i used to walk that the river walk with my dog great exercise had a great time but some people some of these dog owners aren't um they don't clean up after the dogs and I think we were behind a Great Dane one day, and then the pile was almost yeah. as big as my dog. So, you know, and he's looking at it, and I'm like, you know, it's, if people would just do what they're supposed to do. Don't litter. Pick up after their dogs. We, we'd be able to utilize that there. But there was an issue 10 years ago, whatever it was. Yeah, it the alderman stopped yeah. it. You can go to Ansonia's side and use their side still with, with the animals, with dogs. But Derby right now, 
the aldermen in our habitat. There's no, and there's no plans to suddenly go change that. Okay. No. Uh, another Chris LaRoque question, and he had this was sort of a general category livability in the downtown area. He referred to it as the urban core, and he asked, "What is or could the city do to help livability in its urban core?" And I think livability is sort of a from what I Googled, is a fairly general municipal planning term. Uh, but the concept I thought that he was getting to was fleshed out in other questions posed by someone named Carl Forlano, uh, because he gets into specific problems that he's experiencing in his neighborhood, but he didn't say where he lived, though. He said, uh, garbage. How can a community get more involved to get people to stop trashing our streets, and can we put more garbage cans in? Which you do see, I, you know, I live in Derby, and uh, sometimes after garbage collection, uh, it's almost, some of it gets left behind. Uh, some does. Say. I mean, we have city carding that's out there, and anytime there's an issue, and Pam, um, my assistant over here, she'll get the phone calls. We call right up to city carding. They have a pickup truck that's up at the transfer station. They'll go right out to that Oh, no kidding. Okay. And pick up whatever. They got shovels. They got brooms. So that's not a, that's not a problem. So if you see that, call the mayor's office. You can call the mayor's office, okay. and Pam will, will direct it right to city carding. And, and, you know, I see it. I'll stop myself and pick stuff up. My neighborhood, I do it. Um, we've, we've done cleanups. This past one, had a, we canceled because of the rain. I, I just uh, touched base with the Methodist Church over here in downtown Derby. Their uh, bishop for the area was in town today, so I had breakfast with them. And they're looking to do more things with us and i said one of our big things that we want to do is a citywide cleanup and the last time we did it we picked up 1900 pounds of garbage with the schools we're working on trying to get the uh, boy scouts the methodist church is looking i'm going to try to get the veterans to help out and I, I would love to see that as a more of a monthly or quarterly event to keep the city clean i mean every time i see it the public works is out there they're, they're constantly out there picking up trash certain areas and it uh, granted, we're not. I'm out there constantly, but if there's some area that you think needs a little bit more attention, please contact the uh, either Public Works or contact the mayor's office, and we'll get our people out there. And then also, uh, Carl asked about underage drinking that he's seeing in his neighborhood. It sounds like basically uh, he says uh, kids don't live in the area, but they sit outside all night drinking. Uh, he's asking the police to do more. He's saying that, uh, and this is kind of a general theme uh, that you hear a lot all over right. uh, police officers driving by maybe not getting out of the cars like they used to and bike patrols and things like right. that uh, well i think i mean we, we changed the uh that idea when well, my first term in here i'm constantly out there and hawkins street was like my one big feather in my cap where the bodega that was over there they were selling people were out there drinking constantly they were selling drugs they were doing drugs they were urinating in the streets and I had the cops out there constantly. The police were out there. I was going by there. I was pulling out their chairs. The neighbors were sending me pictures of what's going on there. We cleaned that place up. We have a new bodega that's in there now. Uh, the owners are there. They keep that place nice and clean. There's no loitering. There's no drinking out there. So you need just to let us know where it's at, and we will get the uh, we'll get the officers out there. I'll be out there. I, I love talking to people. I'm still a part time officer in Bethany. I love talking to people, and I will. They don't want to hang out with the cops. <laughs> and do you? I mean, in terms of we just had the there was a shooting last month on Eighth Street. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, my my kid rides his bike right there. You know, and now I'm telling him, don't go beyond Coon Hollow Road. You know, because and he knows that it happened. So he's nervous about it. And so you do have that, what can we do? And I don't know, I mean, what can law enforcement do to prevent something like that? Well, but, basically, uh, if you see it, something, give us a call. See something, say something. You know, if they're, they're, you've got people out there hanging out, call us. We'll get the officers out there. They Trust me, these derby officers get out of their car, they make contact, and we're going to identify who's in the area. If you don't belong in the area, what are you doing here? You know, it's a free country. You can use our public streets and everything like that, but what are you doing here? We'd like to know. I definitely, you know, that's part of one of our tools. So please call. Uh, and then taxes. This is from Autumn Cara and Danielle Bettino basically asked the same question. Autumn asked what steps are being taken to decrease taxes this year, while Danielle Bettino said as a question, raising the mill rate on us again this year? Three question marks. Okay, here we go. And I just got this from our uh, assessor. Betsy downstairs our grand list for 18 was 723 million 500 thousand 19 700 
37 million 450 for an increase of 13 million dollars on the grant list that's a 1.92 increase for uh, assessed values also um, like I just spoke on the the uh, fuel cell that's going to be another two hundred thousand dollars a year coming into our coffers so that's going to help some and it's a start and we get the development across the street started it's going to be huge and then in terms of the tax board, I mean, it, one thing I should point out, I think people often think that the mayor sets the budget. He actually does not in Derby. It's the Board of Taxation and Apportionment, although, of course, the mayor can have influence being the top elected official. But, Andrew, do you know, have they I don't have they started the budget process or it's probably right about there? And obviously, we're coming off a year where hopefully that was an aberration where we had what happened to the budget and that what happened happened. Everything's uh, trickling in right now. So all these okay. agencies are sending uh, their requests. So I'll let yeah, I think Judy uh, Sepchak, who is the chair of the tax board, she'll reach out to all the department heads and ask for their budgets. And I think you'll see the budget built from the ground up this year. I think maybe in years past it was kind of like plug, plug in numbers from the previous year and just kind of um, a little bit. Oh, well, you're going to see a different process this year from, from what I understand. And obviously we have a new finance director. We have a new treasurer. We have some different members of the tax board. Um, I think the mayor's office has two years under our belt. Um, so I think there'll be a lot more kind of uh, uh, conversation revolving around the budget. And uh, look, I look forward to that process this year. But in terms of the taxes, to, to Autumn's question directly, the only thing that's going to lower taxes for property owners in the city, in which the mayor and I both are, um, is commercial and, and residential development so that it's not on the backs of the taxpayers. So we're working really hard on that. And again, to me, the first domino to fall is this Derby downtown group, the 203 residential units that they're going to have there in addition to their commercial space. And hopefully the, uh, and the development that uh, comes as a result of that. Because really what we found when we started to work on development of, of Main Street and downtown was that without a captive residential base that is going to support some of these local businesses, you won't get a proposal for uh, downtown businesses. They want to know that there's people here that are going to service their restaurants and their uh, you know, banks and, and things like that. So, again, this is the first part of that. And we will have a residential component to our uh, to our development of the, the land up against the river between the Derby Shelton Bridge and Factory Street. Uh, but this takes a chunk of that off of our plate. Now, it kind of makes commercial development more viable when you have... The residential base and all you have to do is look across the river at shelton where and i was going to say this before but i don't want to go ahead take up your I mean, sure. in shelton they're tearing down the old dunkin donuts which looked like a perfectly fine building mm -hmm. to me but there's such demand there that they're they're redeveloping uh, a, a commercial property that was oh absolutely that was full and so doing what they, we can we can throw a rock and hit it well let me right? i'm also in uh, i want to piggyback on what drew was just talking about too is that we did our contracts with our city unions um we did five of them, and what we were able to accomplish is, like, the unions worked with us. They, they're, they're paying more to their medical. They, they gave us a zero increase on their first years, which was huge because compounded over the four or five years, like, for these contracts, we saved hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars that, that, that you know, the taxpayers are saving on that. So we worked with the union. The unions worked with us. They, under, they, they realized they have a great job. Um, and we realize we have great people and we want to work with them. So in conjunction with, with development, with commercial property, we're also working with the unions and they've been helping us, you know, lower the taxes over here too. So, and I just want the people to know that our union employees really step up to the plate for and, us. And to be fair, I think what we're worst at sometimes is talking about things like that. You know, nobody knows that because it's not something to me that you really should have to be you know, publicized and politicized, but by virtue of how close the election is, was, I think we need to do more of letting people know that that was an effort. That was a step that was taken that took every bit of 18 months of contract negotiation to get those kinds of things done. A lot of those things happen behind the scenes. And I think to be fair, we're not vocal enough about some of those things sometime to let people know the steps that have been taken and you know, the things that we have done. People want to say, what happened? Well, you know, they want to, they want to, they want to harp on what we haven't done, but the things that we have done, maybe we just haven't been good enough at really getting the message out. It could times. be because, and also you see when I, when we put these questions out, it's the same questions that get asked each mm -hmm. time, which 
that could be a communication issue if there's for other sure. stuff going on. They for don't sure. Know. We definitely don't communicate enough from City Hall, and I think a lot of that is, uh, I think, my fault sometimes because right. I feel like we get so busy with working that you don't have time. Great job, to, Andrew. You know, I know, exactly. Yeah. You know, dock me. For he sure. didn't get a raise, I did, did he? not. No, Three years didn't. in a row. No, two years in a row. He oh, took no raise. <laughs> he was sending his resume. Yeah. All right, school regionalization. This is also from Danielle Potino, and this is to the mayor. Are you yay or nay to the combining of Ansonia and Derby school districts? And Danielle says, hope not. I, the one thing I wanted to do, in which I think this our administration did, was bring both towns to the table to talk about what we can do for shared services. You say regionalization, everybody's like, "Oh my God!" They just like they freak out about that. But we're already doing like a lot of shared services right now. We're, we're utilizing Ansonia's fuel pumps for Derby and Ansonia, so we saved over four hundred thousand dollars having to put a new pumping uh, gas pumps over there. We're utilizing the public works uh, sh salt and sand shed that they have. That would have been a, probably another half a million dollars to build one over here in Derby. So we're doing a lot of shared services, and I, it sounds like I'm going off, off, off base with this a little bit. But, but that's actually, the next question, the next segment uh, was municipal okay. so, efforts. But it, it works in together with the, um, the school systems. Is it going to be all the kids go to Ansonia High School and then Derby – no, or was it going to be? Is it going to open up classes? Like we have a new um, manufacturing school in Derby. Can we bring those Ansonia children over here to educate them? Is it, is that going to be part of it? So we have ten individuals plus the state looking into best possible uh, answers to, to save it. Because it, listen, if we go it alone, taxes are going to go up. They're going to go up. They're going to go up. But if we combine certain uh, parts of this and share it, I mean, with uh, with special ed, I would love to see the state come in and just handle the whole special ed because if you're in Ansonia, all of a sudden you move to Derby, now we picked up a special ed student that could sometimes rise up to $180,000. Should the state handle all this and it doesn't matter where you live, I'd be a great proponent of that because that would save the local um, board of eds from really having to deal with this because we have our budget lined up and next thing you know, in Derby and Sonia, we're a distressed city and the, and the rents are very low around here. You can get someone coming in here and next thing you know, you didn't budget for that $180,000 child. Boom, now we got it. And that's and when you're talking specifically about if anybody out there doesn't know, if a, if a child comes in with needs that can't be taken care of in the local school system, uh, the child is sent to a place where they can receive uh, an education and the help uh, that he or she needs often but there's tuition uh, that accompanies Absolutely. that and it's the, the responsibility be. of the home district to pay it right. all transportation uh, uh and originally the feds were everything. supposed to pay for that when that exactly. whole concept came out it was supposed to be so, federal right. government unfunded mandates that we have and I, I really think the state needs to everybody's talking about it and every forum you go to with our legislators they're all talking about this oh we got to do something about well i think they need to get up there and start doing something about this and, and then just backtracking the for one second in case anybody listening who doesn't realize that there is as the mayor mentioned a committee of about 10 people studying whether to regionalize or, 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 or share services in some way they're meeting this week again all those meetings are open to the public uh they're doing a ton of absolutely work, so that and study is happening the studies out there um and they're we're picking through it and I, everybody on my board, some some are for it, some are against it, and some are undecided. That's why I put on our our committee to see exactly. I want the best of all worlds in there, and all the brains to look at this and then come up with a solution that's going to help the cities and help the children out. Uh, and then just one last question about regionalization uh, since you sort of went ahead and answered some of these but this is from uh, Jennifer Magri uh, she's a Seymour resident uh, born and raised in Ansonia and she asked the same question of Miller so you guys are being a little uh, closed mouthed about what are you guys uh, I should read her question I'm editorializing what yeah. we did damn liberal bias she <laughs> says what conversations have you had with first selectman Kurt Miller of Seymour regarding regionalization of Services. services what we did when i first got when we first came to the office uh we regionalized the detective divisions between seymour and sonia derby woodbridge and orange i believe detective divisions so what it is now if we have a major crime that comes in those detectives will come over to derby derby will be the lead investigated unit and we'll have all these great investigated minds here to help us solve this case if it's a murder, serious crime. Same thing as a motor vehicle accident. If it's a fatal motor vehicle accident, 
those same towns all have their accident reconstruction. As a matter of fact, when we signed that agreement between those five towns, a week later there was an accident, head-on collision, Roosevelt Drive by the Seymour line. It was Derby. We had Orange, Seymour, and Derby investigating that accident. And then where it normally would take somewhere up to five to ten hours to investigate, it was done within three or four hours. The road was opened up in a reasonable amount of time, but we were able to utilize all the technology each town has so we don't all have to buy the same tools to do the same job so that's how we did it that so, wasn't happening previously no we so did. this was an mou you guys signed, yes and a memorandum of under, memorandum of understanding yes. no, i wasn't aware of that. And, okay. yeah and also we have met with both kurt and uh and sonia staff to discuss uh, other regional initiatives recently uh quite a few times and we'll continue to do so to look into any and all possibilities. There, there's, there's quite a few things where we think we can, we can work yes. together. And I, I said I wouldn't butt into this, but I'm going to ask a sure. question. Going back to like the, the, the police issue. I mean, sometimes I've sat at tax board meetings, and it's surprising to know, like at certain times of the day or night or at certain times, you th I think the public thinks there's 18 police officers on the road at all times, but sometimes that number is very low because the police department gets funded to a certain level, and that's what it, that's what the chief works with. It, would regionalizing police departments be on the table, or is that just people too talk about that? We're, we're already basically regionalizing our uh, dispatching, so we all go up to Northwestern. I think it is up there. Yeah. Um, but I mean. It, that's a th that's a tough one, but we do have a mutual agreement. Like if something happens in Derby and we need extra officers, patrol, Ansonia, Seymour, State, everybody's going to show up, just like the fire departments and everything. So we have those mutual agreements. There are extra officers out there in surrounding towns that will come to our aid. So if we need it, granted we have thirty six officers, and it's a smaller department, but they're out there. They have their patrol zones and um, their you know, what what they're doing to keep the city safe. So I mean, they are out there. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, and then it, these are sort of last bunch here. Uh, these are more individual questions. It's about I have one forty. You may or see what do you got? You meeting the president or something? What do you got going on after this? I, this should be the real story. Oh no no no, I'm good. Okay, so the I'm just uh, stretching this <laughs> just looking towards the clock. <laughs> this is from Johnny D. This is one of the homeowners who was affected by the uh, mudslide that came off the uh, athletic project. Uh, that was going on. Uh, there's now a lawsuit going. I looked at the case file the other day uh, online. Anybody can do this. And uh, certainly the insurance companies are involved. There must have been. I've never seen so many names and different uh, lawyers and insurance companies involved in one case. Uh, but he, he asks, he, he takes a, a hit at you. He says, why haven't you helped the people whose houses and property were damaged due to the field project? It's been well over a year and nothing has been done. Okay. Um the day that happened, uh, matter of fact, Frank Pepe, who was a local contractor, um, pulled up. He goes, you got to see what's going on. So I jumped in his truck. We went down to the west side. Uh, we saw it just coming down there. It was like, I think, six or seven inches of rain in a quick amount of time. It was like a, a, it was a river coming down there. Uh, Doc Conway, who's basically an agent of our city, also was handling that area because they were doing everything with the project. I went over towards Gilbert Street over to Commerce Street. There was flooding over there, Sodom Lane, my house, my area, Crack House Street. I mean, there was flooding all over the city, so it was kind of impossible for me to be all over the place. I did see what was going on over there. Um, we Once that happened, spoke to a couple of the residents that had bulk, they needed more bulk pickup because a lot of the uh, their possessions. About a dozen houses were damaged. Damaged, and a lot of their furniture, so we sent Public Works over there to at least uh, alleviate some of that uh, headache for them so they can get rid of some of their stuff there uh, and then in the, in the process um, uh, Dr. Conway was kind of the lead point over with them uh, we were working throughout the rest of the city and then the insurance companies and some people were like taking a shot at me saying well why how come the city doesn't pony up on this and start paying for it and I go you know what Eugene I would have loved to but when we walked into this office we were told there was a 1.2 million dollar surplus well that wasn't true they stuck us with about a $2 million deficit. So there was no money to compensate these residents in order to pay them off so they're, they're whole and then go after these insurance companies. It wasn't there. You know? So unfortunately, the previous administration kind of left us hanging. So now it's in the hands of the insurance company. So if you've ever been involved in an accident, homeowner claim, fire, something like that, 
it's not that quick. And now that it's a lawsuit and the lawyers are all involved, you know, it, it's just going to be keep going and going. And hopefully we're looking at a mediation. Okay, I was going to ask, is there yeah. any way this yes. is going to be resolved? And Drew has some more information on that. Yeah, and I, I just want to say publicly, and I said it at the Board of Aldermen meeting about two months ago, because apparently during the last time I was on your show, I said that the mayor had gone to these these that was like a, at least a year ago. Believe it or not, somebody said it to me recently, though. One of the residents said, you know, you, you said that, you lied. So if, if I misspoke, I knew the mayor was out and about in general area. Did, so the, did he go in these people's basements and put waders on to see that they had mud there? No, he did not. And, you know, I think in retrospect, have we could, could we have done anything to maybe make them feel like they were heard more than they already were at the Board of Aldermen uh, meetings where they became came present? And that was the way to go. I mean, they, they did the right thing that route. And then they were advised to bring a claim against the city, which they have, um, and the city is listed as an additional insured on all the policies of the contractors who did the job. So therefore, our city insurance was saying, well, you're covered under those policies for this. This is not a city insurance issue, if you will. So we've done everything we can to get those parties to the table. It's been very difficult. To your point, Eugene, there's how many how many defendants? Um, there's also, I think, 13 plaintiffs. So to get everybody to the table to have this conversation continue, we would like nothing more than for this to be handled expediently. Um, the, the And just like you, I checked the docket. I checked the docket this week as well as well i think there's i think february 20th is the next appearance and, and i i hope that the appetite of everybody is to get to the mayor's point to yeah, mediation they can, they can get their money they can get, get to a mediation they get their money and and we can move on from this but you know it, granted it, it was it was a terrible thing that was experienced by those people and and we feel terrible about it i, I think that's one probably the one black mark from the first two years and the first term that really i think probably we, we think about and talk about pretty regularly as to you know we could have maybe handled it differently to make people feel like they were more heard than they were. And I have extended family who was involved in that lawsuit who was very mad at me for this process through this process. And and you're I, not that far from him. You I live, I right, live right, right, right in that neighborhood yeah. too. So you know, I, I just you know, I, I hope it comes to a speedy resolution. I hope these people are made whole, and uh, you know, we hope we can move on from this because it's not been a good thing. Okay, and this is from Paul Stefano. When is the big blue Smurf building coming down? He's talking about the building right next door to City the Hall here. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. scaffolding with that blue thing. That is a frustrating one to see. I, I know I'm not supposed to give an opinion, it, it, but you're driving mm, to Derby's Main yes. Street, and that's been sitting there for like we a look year. We look at it out our window every day out City Hall. Trust it me. was, uh, we talked to DLT. Although if you come DLT, look at my house. I also, I, I, DLT has the, uh, uh, gave them the permit because it's right on 34 there, and they gave them, I think, an extension, but I don't think the extension they're not going to go any further with it because they have to show some progress on correcting that building. So I uh, directed our building department to c continue to follow up on finding out exactly what's going on and forward it up to uh, Connecticut DOT. Is there any hope that that thing will be? I'm not, I mean, an, I'm not an engineer. Their engineers say it's salvageable. Is there a point where the city just goes enough's enough or the state goes enough's enough. We take this down. Well, once again, we're, we were just re, resupplying our reserve fund because we were left in a hole my first term, you know, from the previous administration. So we were trying to build that back up. I mean, when this started falling down out there, that first thing I wanted to do, but they were looking at probably a half a million dollars to – That the city doesn't have to go – That we don't have. And, and it's considered dirty because it's probably asbestos and lead paint and everything else in there. And so the whole building would have been dirty. And then to get rid of dirty dirt and debris, it, it, the prices are... I just had an idea, guys. Let's hear it. Ghosts. Say it's haunted. That's it. <laughs> then people will want to come from everywhere to see it. That's, That's it. it. And they'll take a brick and they'll leave. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the boat ramp. Uh, this is from uh, Laura Brezina Desheen. Uh, the season for boating and fishing is coming. The boat ramp is still closed. What have they done or will be doing to open up the old one or get a new one somewhere? Yeah. So the boat, you guys can't open that. It's not yours. Andrew is I'm, like involved in this. I'll let him yes, handle this. Yes, I've been doing the living boat, boat, the boat ramp life for the last year with DOT. So we don't own the boat ramp. Um, it is currently under DOT control. And uh, Deep has something to say about it because it's in the waterway. Um, there will, we cannot make any improvements to it. We can't do anything, anything to it right now. We're lucky to have it for emergency access. There have been multiple incidents in that stretch of the river mm. where our fire department has needed to get in there. 
Um, but at the end of the day, uh, we will most likely that will never become a recreational ramp again. Like I know it was being used for, it was never really intended for that. But to answer Laura's question, there is a separate project for a fishing and viewing platform, um, down at O'Sullivan's Island, which is really, uh, far along in the process. There will probably, I think there's one more public hearing about, uh, scheduled for that. And, uh, I'll have to look into exactly the date, but I want to say sometime in March to talk about the details of that. We went through kind of a redesign phase with that, but the idea is particularly with the new development down here, Derby downtown, that we do want to be able to have better, uh, access to the river and to the waterfront down there. So, uh, in terms of that ramp, you can abandon the idea of that ramp. I think I could say that with confidence right now of that ever being a, you guys made deep mad. So uh, yeah, we made everybody <laughs> mad, but it wasn't, you know, people were using it. It was they like crazy. It. And then they, yeah. the, the alderman authorized us to issue permits to go down there, which we didn't even own it. So we had to Nobody reimburse knew. everybody that bought them. Parking passes so, and everything. So, and yeah, actually, contractor just, got a ticket. Just got the bill from DOT actually to, uh, two days ago in the mail. I don't even know if the mayor's seen it yet to say, you know, in order to lease that property, even for emergency access, we have to pay the state five hundred dollars to lease the ability oh, to get into sense. the emergency waterway so we we now have to figure out where we're cutting that check from for so if somebody's bucks. drowning get a whole way we didn't pay we didn't pay we, yeah we got, so call but it, shelton but we got to follow the, the steps and whatever Absolutely. the and like, yeah. and that's another thing shelton so if we didn't have this access here they'd have to go up to sunnyside yeah. which is right. south and then by the time they get back here they just had a Water rescue underneath the, the bridge. Yeah, somebody fell in last week. And they had a couple other water rescues that are down there. So, I mean, it's 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 vital to the safety of our uh, residents here. And a lot mm -hmm. of people, when I look out here, a lot of people see it. There's a lot of boaters out here that, that fish for the stripers and everything like that. So, it's it's we definitely need that. All right, this is the last question. Uh, it's more probably something I should just email. You guys are all... You guys are all become professional now in your second term. You're <laughs> looking at our watches. Your watches oh, it's every actually, five it's minutes. A, it's an Apple Watch. You know, I got a text. I apologize. Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, this was really a very specific constituent question from Jackie Eaton. She says, now that the 255 CT Transit bus travels to Pershing Drive on the Ansonia side, a lot of people that use the bus would like to know if you can have them go up to the ShopRite Plaza on the Derby side uh, before it goes up the hill. I'll, I'll send this to you, but she no, says definitely. that she called CT Transit and she was told that only the mayor of the town can make the right connections for Absolutely. this That's, to happen. Yes, so have uh, yeah, please email that, and we will send it up to DOT. Okay. Well, is there anything else you gentlemen wanted to add before you throw me out of the building? Um, oh, when's your next bartending guest uh, celebrity? Oh, so like celebrity yes, bartending. so we started last month I did uh, at Retro, and we raised 800 and I think it was like $840 for the Derby after prom, post, -prom committee. post prom committee so that's going to help keep these kids occupied after the prom keep them nice and safe our next one is february 24th at archie moore's we're doing it for the derby uh shelton boys and girls club which we have about like 240 kids from derby utilize that place mm -hmm. so we're going to be uh, over there uh 5 30 to 7 30 um we're, i'm just going to keep plugging along we we did the uh, fireworks again last year we raised all the money for that we're going to be doing that again um, I'm all about raising as much as I can for the local charities, and we're working on team. I just talked to David Morgan next door. So that one's coming up in Griffin Hospital, and, I, you know, I love, and it's a great opportunity that anybody's listening out there. Come, have a cocktail with me, and you ask your questions. Right, yeah, whatever ask I could do. So, still uh, here. And I love doing it. I'm, I'm a very, I'm a people's person. I love doing this, so. And what else I think that question came in as like kind of a dig. And I, I got to say, you know, the people that have a problem with the mayor doing that because you don't like the medium, we're adults, we're responsible. We're not encouraging people to come in. You come in and have French fries if you want. This is to add awareness for local nonprofits and also bring people into a business that maybe they haven't experienced before. So maybe you get the post-prom uh, parents who showed up to that one who've never been to that establishment before enjoy themselves, and it helps the local business. So, And also we got the um, the Charter Commission. We're waiting for oh, that's Big one. from yeah. the uh, chairman of the Democrat and the Republicans, and we want to do a charter change. We have a couple items that we were looking into, one being the mayor's office. And, An extension uh, of, ter of the term. The possibly. term, possibly more um, hourly, depending how they, you know, what we think we should. Uh, it, 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 I mean, it's a full-time job. I mean, everybody right. says it's part-time, it's full-time. I'm like all over On the place. On paper, it's part-time. But it's obviously right. you never stop being the mayor. You go to the right. grocery store, you go wherever you go. I mean, all right. day, every day, he's inundated. I actually don't go out in town, and my role because, and I'm less visible than him. Everybody knows who he is. This isn't a ceremonial position no. where you're 
have Absolutely a town not. manager behind the scenes doing right. the formal stuff. No, he works hard and gets uh, and gets yeah. a lot done with limited, really mm-hmm. limited compensation. I mean, and who who could with for that limited compensation? You know, the, yeah. the, we're always going to get somebody who's got a second income or things like right. that in this role because I don't think. I don't think many people could survive right. on that pay no, in this couldn't. state you could. full time only doing that and raise a family and everything and raise a family and everything else. But, but like last weekend we had the Chamber of Commerce that was a legislative thing. So I was over there, you know, answering questions here. Uh, Wednesday it's the opening session up at Hartford. So I'll be up in Hartford. Um, so I'm on the Veterans Affairs Board at the state of Connecticut. I'm in Rocky Hill monthly on that. Um, it, we're all over the place. I'm all over the place. I got a great staff that's constantly there. I go, Drew, you want to come? He goes, I ain't got time to do that. You, yeah. you go out there and represent the city. Um, Newington, when we're up there with DOT, um, with Deep, with uh, DMV. I mean, it's, I'm all over the place. I think the point is people say, you know, oh, I don't see the mayor's car truck there. Well, the mayor's truck is not always at City Hall, and he sometimes is not best served here, for that matter. To be at Newington, be in Hartford. So he's all over the place, and you never stop being the mayor everywhere you go it could be a conversation at lunch that leads to a conversation with a, a developer who didn't even know what we have over here so you know he's right. always doing and then that. like that that's a great example johnson controls we did a 6.4 million dollar upgrade on all our city buildings that conversation what happened though it was a lunch over in shelton a five-minute conversation and next thing you know we all our buildings are being retrofitted with all state-of-the-art air conditioning um uh, LEDs, boilers, LEDs, green technology. So we're saving money in taking that money that we saved and putting it into new um, capital improvements, improvements for the city. For the city, I mean, uh, Bellevue or uh, Bradley School, new gas, gas is cheaper than oil, basically, and then so that's all taken care of. Uh, Irving School is going to be having air conditioning now. So I think two years ago we had to cancel school because it was too hot for the kids in there. So it's like these these. These events that we go, whether it's a lunch or a dinner or somewhere, we're, we're constantly working with the city of Derby and um, network. talking about networking and trying to get it done. Do you know when uh, a charter revision commission, I mean, I guess the aldermen, have to, aldermen, women have to form it? Is that coming we up? We hope this? that will be this upcoming meeting. Oh, uh, but go. we're waiting on, I, really all we're waiting on is both chairman, <coughs> Oni and Sammy, to give us names. <laughs> Throw them right out of the bus. No, to give us names <laughs> and, and and then the, the you know, the all the all. That'll be my headline now. Yeah. <coughs> Oni, Sammy, Sammy yeah. disappeared. No, they, they both have gotten back to me. I, we've, we've emailed them to, to get some names. And, and we had names, to be fair, last time around. And I think just the timing of it wasn't great. Summertime was coming. People were worried about meeting schedules. So we want to definitely have a few things to be contemplated uh, at the presidential election this year, later in November, have some things on the ballot for charter change. So hopefully that happens this month. You'll see it on the Board of Aldermen agenda. All right, gentlemen, those are all my questions. I want to thank you both for being here. You're welcome, Eugene. Anytime. Or actually, I'm, I'm I was going to say, well, thank here. you for being here. We have to be here. We have no yeah. choice. Come to our office. Thanks, Thanks. for, yeah, letting us <laughs> the news For in the info we gave you the clues Owners' profits were always sky high Change in market now threatens our lives Post literation, critical reading, dumb down nation Signs have been breeding TV sucking ideas from our head Discourse just about dead We'll ride the dinosaur Yeah, ride the dinosaur Our readers are in the opens each day yeah.